food and fornication. Unfortunately, our society, primarily because of the degenerates in the media, have fallen lower than the snake. The media has promulgated the idea and promoted the idea that we only need f a food and fornication. And so when people are empty, that's what they seek, food and fornication. And when they're really empty, what happens? They become drug addicts. They start with marijuana, they end up with heroin, crack, you name it. What is it about drugs? What is it that human beings are seeking in drugs? Why do they go for drugs? As God has been driven out of America, drugs have entered America. I know this has been said before. I get it. But what does an empty soul look to do? An empty soul looks to fill itself. Just as an empty vessel needs to be filled with a liquid to be complete. An empty human being needs to fill itself to be complete. And how does it fill itself? I know, again, many of you will laugh because you're cynical. That's <laughs> through those things I'm talking about, inspiration. The musician finds the inspiration God knows where and then has the inspiration to pick up the, the, the instrument. Do you think a musician can play one day without inspiration from somewhere? Unfortunately, so many musicians don't have that human inspiration that they seek, and they get it th through drugs. I get that. I understand. It's true for many artists who don't understand that the greatest artists were not drug addicts. The greatest dr artists in the history of the world were not drug addicts. They were usually God addicts. Did you know that? Look at the greatest art in history. You'll find most of them were super religious people who literally saw God in their living room. And they took the power of God and it was transmitted through the paintbrush or through that piece of marble. How could a man like Rodin take a piece of inert stone and inside that stone see the essence of a human form and sculpt from that block of inert stone of marble the portrait of a human being that looks so real that a uh, hundred years later I go and look at them in the museum and literally inside that carved eye I can see the person. How is that possible? How? My voice and my ability to move crowds is my gift, but it's also my burden. This is a power, the magical voice. It's a power I first discovered when I found out I could speak to the assembly in the first graded PS48 in a slum school in the Bronx. I found out that I enjoyed speaking to that crowd of kids. I wasn't afraid of them. I loved seeing their faces smile when I told a joke or made a, f a fool of myself. It didn't matter. I was a little clown, and they laughed. I liked that. Or when I spoke with such a clear voice and wasn't afraid, the little pipsqueak that I was, and the crowd listened to me, I enjoyed that power. And I discovered something. I discovered I can move audiences, and that means I can change people's fates. As I learned later in life, it's not about just being a clown. It's not about entertaining people and making them laugh. It's about changing people's fates. It's a great gift and a great burden. I must tell you, I see as my last day in radio, my last day on earth. Would you believe that? I know you don't believe that. I know it's a, it's a form of reverse worship. But it's the only way to approach what I do and have any meaning. If I look at every show as though it's my last show, I look at my, my every book as my last book. That's a pretty big stress, by the way. But it also permits me to be fresh and new. I said again, and I'll repeat it again, some inspire through hate. Do I have to say who? Do I have to mention who inspires through hate and division? Do I have to say the names or the organizations that use hate and division as their stock and trade? Or through anger, rage, false righteous indignation? I've used all of them. In my 21 years, I've used every one of those emotions to move my audiences because every one of those emotions raged through me or played through me or danced through me. There's a story of Einstein. I love this story. Great, great physicist Einstein. Uh, at this point, he was quite famous, and he had, he had agreed to an audience with some man, I don't know who it was, was allowed to see him. The man came in, Einstein was sitting behind his desk, and he said, Herr Einstein, Herr Einstein, I realize what your theory of relativity means. It means that nothing is real. Nothing is real. So as the story goes, Einstein stood up slowly, walked over to him and slapped him in the face. And he said, is that real? 
Now, you see what I'm saying to you. Don't get so disconnected from reality with your philosophy that you forget the danger you put yourself in, whether it means slipping on a sidewalk because your head is in the clouds or bicycling through an intersection and killing a civilian because you think you're so great, as occurs too often in San Francisco where there are no laws against these bicycle terrorists. Or, in fact, in many other ways, you can get so disconnected from your body that you have no reality, which leads us back again to how do I inspire you in an age where those who hate us want to kill us and, in fact, are killing us. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth and financial future. Call 1-800-289-2600. As I've said numerous times on this show, I'll say it again today, and we're talking about love and hate, love versus hate. If you look back into the Jewish Bible, the Old Testament, it's filled with hate. It, sells, it says to kill homosexuals, kill adulterers, and more. You see, I've read Leviticus, including on the air. But modern Jews, even modern Orthodox Jews, don't kill homosexuals and they don't stone adulteresses. They know the difference between a 5,000-year-old text and the real world, the civilized world built upon Judeo-Christian values, but which eschews those passages that obviously proceed from man's barbaric past and not from the mind of God. What I just read to you is on page 279 of Government Zero. And so much more about what we are facing today, about U.S. Muslim attitudes, about Christian attitudes, Jewish attitudes, and nothing says it more than the sound bites that I played today of that poor man the, the leader of the Yazidi Human Rights Organization, who spoke before Congress and told stories that you could not believe are real about abducted girls, seven, eight, nine-year-olds, who are being raped repeatedly until they bleed to death. And another story about children who were torn from their mothers by ISIS. And then the mothers come to the headquarters before the monsters to plead for the return of their children, and they're fed a meal. And then these monsters... These members of the Islamic State inform the poor mother that they have just been fed the flesh of their own children by ISIS. Children murdered and fed to their own mothers. And many of you have sent me notes. Please post it somewhere. I'm putting it up on michaelsavage.com. I want it to be spread around the country until eventually you shame Hillary Clinton into representing women. Until you eventually shame all of the liars in the Obama administration to face the real genocides, the real hatred that is going on in real time right now 